Elliot, welcome back to 160 Studio. It's sort of Delray, sort of your second home these days. Absolutely, yes. It's great to be back. Uh, as you said, uh, great to be back in the second home, which is down here in South Florida. So thanks for having me. Love to see you. Yeah, yeah. And then take us up to speed on ev everything Innovis these days. It's been a very, very active period for you. Yeah, it's been a. It's been. I think it was almost to the day a year since I was last down with you. So uh, what a, what a year it's been. And um, I guess to to, to recap, um, we've just announced a, an incredible partnership. Um, with major society and strategic here in the US, and there's more coming on that uh, in the next couple of days and weeks. So um, that's a, a major milestone for us towards our mission statement as a business, which is to become the world's partner for surgical training. It is quite literally the best case study we could ever have of partnering with the, all of the people involved in delivering training, societies and strategic med techs, and then, of course, most importantly, the the physicians themselves. So mm -hmm. that's a big one. And then, um, as I'm sure we're going to speak about today, uh, we've just gone through another sprint of hiring and our, our second tranche of hiring, supported by both of you. And thanks very much for that uh, here in the US. Um, and that's uh, that's been another great process that we've run. So looking forward to talking more about it today. And uh, Ryan leads the effort for TMG, for all things Innovis. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, know, you, you used the word partnership when you opened up that piece. And, and I think that's part of the success Elliot, that you have continued to insinuate into your business practices. You know, I've sat from my seat, I've sat and listened to partner, 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 but it's not lip service. Like you really live that. You live that as a core principle. And I think that probably has some of the success beside a phenomenal product <clears throat> and leadership is that when you start working with an organization, they really feel like we are part of your company. Mm -hmm. And that, that changes the level of commitment and as a business owner helps me with predictability and even wants me to win more for you, right? So right, you, know, you should comment on that because you yeah. are front line and you lead the team. Yeah, it's been an amazing process. So when I first started at TMG, Elliot was one of our first clients that I had the privilege to work with. And since then we've become friends, which is great. Um, but more importantly is the reason this works so well is because I adhered to his process and he adhered to our process. And it was so dialed in, exactly what he said would happen, would happen. And that's where things get off track sometimes in the hiring process is if you don't adhere to you know, either what we do or what they do. And Elliot, I mean, we're gonna get into this later, I'm sure, but the amount of information he gives you, it's like an encyclopedia. And I had to read and study about Innovis and their culture and their hiring process and the Belbin assessment. I'm like, what the heck is a Belbin assessment? You know, we have the disc profile and strength finders here. You use Belbin, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, so for me, it was a learning process, but also so nice to not have to worry about what's next, what's next, because we are always in touch following your process. Yeah. And and thanks for the kind words, first of all, Joe. It's really, really nice of you to say, and um, uh, it's very humbling hearing those from you. And I think. Yeah, going back to the piece around around this partnership and process, let's talk about partnership first. Um, one thing I say is when we're when we're raising venture capital, I don't tell our investors what they want to hear. I tell them what's going to happen mm. to the best of our possible ability. This is what is going to happen. And when we talk about our mission statement or any of our core values or our principles, we are very clear that those are the things we're going to stand by. But the only way that that has any credibility is if we actually stick to it. So the partnership model, we are living up our mission statement of becoming the world's partner for surgical training. But the partnership model extends to everything we do. And as you've already said, it extends to our search and hiring partners. Mm -hmm. It extends to a lot of our team members who are fractionals, mm -hmm. who, again, we bring them into the business as if they're part of our business, because they are. We couldn't run the business without them. We couldn't grow our business without you guys. Yeah. So it's really nice of you to say that. I think that the um, the approach to that partnership piece is really, really importantly, really good communication. Mm -hmm. like we had a conversation around this particular piece where I said, Joe, here's a piece of pressure that I'm under. I just want you to be aware of that with regards to this particular round of hiring. Um, that means we're going to have to do this part of the process slightly differently. Is that okay with you and your team? And the first thing you said is, well, I understand the process. Um, and so, yeah, that's fine. And that, that just brings me back onto the process piece, which is we, we came to you guys and said, I need, to, I need to hire a full implementation team in, in 30 days. That's not like we're still going in 30 days. We're almost offers. Offers done, accepted. I need to be training them in 30 days from now, 31 days from now. 
And to Ryan's point, and, and again, when communicating to you, say, also, these are the other pressures that we're under, mm. we could turn to that and say, we haven't changed our processes. We've communicated those to you. Let's recap them. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we'll hear from Ryan on, on, on hopefully how valuable this is. Mm -hmm. But I think that consistency in saying what you're going to do and doing it, and then wrapping process around it and being consistent with your process and not lurching from one process to the next is hopefully what's uh, making it successful so far. Yeah, and, and what's interesting too, <clears throat> Elliot, and we chat about this all the time whenever we you know, share with you know, the, the world at large is when you're manufacturing something, mm. it's all about process. Mm. You know, manufacturing, quality, inspection, supply chain, Process, 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 KPIs in the process, not KPIs retrospectively, like happens in hiring. Well, mm -hmm. what was our diversity numbers? Or how many days to interviews? That's retrospective data. Mm -hmm. When you set KPIs in the rest of your business model, but not in hiring, you have to wonder why do companies have less than optimal outcomes in their hiring? Mm -hmm. And you know, you've had incredible retention, your team has crushed their numbers, mm -hmm you tend to hire outside of the classic medical device profile. And the tools that you use are process tools, Yes. right? DISC, Belvin, right? They're giving you empirical evidence and data sets to make decisions on, not hunches. You're spot on. And then, then it comes to wrapping that around some really clear communication to those, those team members. So, just going back one step around the, that, that process, it's astonishing to me when I see some really successful businesses and I speak to their senior leadership because I, I'm like, well, what can I learn from you guys? It'd be great to hear about your processes for this, that, and the other, especially when it comes to hiring because we view that as the single most important part of building this business. Um, and then they'll be saying, well, we don't really have a process. We, we, we're not really sure who leads on this, that, and the other. It's not all the time. But I, I, find, I find that astonishing because we take this so seriously. Um, and then when we're thinking about those people coming in, it's like, here's our process for you to follow as the candidate. So it's really clearly communicated to you. But the most important bit around retention and people hitting their numbers for us is replicating that when they're inside the business as well. So again, here are the things that we expect from you. Here are our really clearly defined core values. Mm -hmm. We don't hire necessarily for simulation or med tech. We hire for our core values. Everything else we can implement the knowledge through training and reps, um, but then being really clear with that communication and saying, guys, if you're straying away from the values of the business, we need to bring you back to that because um, it, it really isn't that difficult. We've only got three of them. This is what they all mean. <laughs> and you just got to live those. And we know that if you live those, you'll end up being successful. And I, I think and I hope that's a big part of our, our retention so far as well. Mm -hmm. and, and Ryan, you know this because you manage the individuals who are in the process and certainly the offer process. Mm -hmm. These individuals had other offers mm. from large strategics oh, yeah. that were, if you don't mind me saying, mm. a couple more dollars. Oh yeah. Yet they couldn't accept these offers quick enough. Yeah, and, and that speaks to Elliot's process, period. Their feedback to me was, this was such an enjoyable process. First of all, they get to meet the founder of the company. That doesn't happen very often. He's so hands-on. It's a Zoom interview face-to-face -face with the founder. And if that goes well, then you meet them in person in an area that we'll disclose later when you tell us where that is. Um, but they meet in person and then you make a decision. It was a very quick process. And of course you have the assessment portion, you have the leadership team in that final interview, but it was very prescribed. And their feedback to me was, well, if this process mirrors their culture at Innovus, I'm gonna be real happy with my decision. So that, that's been the feedback and that's what you want. Do you know, and this, this is, uh, we've obviously nailed this round of hiring again, thanks to, <laughs> thanks to your help, which is exactly the same um, lines of communication that are coming to me, which was, look, actually, sort of, after we've been onboarding them and training them, it's mm -hmm. coming out saying, well, actually, I, had, I was in the stage of this process with this particular strategic, mm -hmm. and they said exactly the same thing, which was, which was really humbling for us to hear, right? Which was, actually, there was probably slightly more money on the table, but your, your process won over. It wasn't that, uh, Elliot, you were, you were nice and charismatic and charming. They didn't tell me that, that would have been nice to hear. But it was your process won over mm -hmm. and we thought that was the right place for us to go. Um, so I think, look, it's a, it's a difficult market at the moment, yeah. um, but 
us as senior leadership and, and the company shouldn't be resting on our laurels just going, well, let's just throw process in the bin because there's loads of talent available. I don't, I don't think that's what we should be doing. We should be doubling down on that right now and saying to the same thing, I need to do a process in 30 days rather than 90 days. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you just run the same process. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. because there's a lot of talent available at the moment and it's difficult out there for the talent, um, doesn't mean that us as the senior leadership go, let's throw the process in the bin because then we're just going to end up with not having consistent hires that then come in and leave, live and breathe the culture of the business. Mm -hmm. and, and you hit on it is there's no question in my mind that the hiring process is indicative of the culture in the company, mm -hmm. regardless of big or small. So that's yeah. number one. Number two is people think that because it's fast, you sacrifice diligence. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You can, when you take speed and tie it to metrics and evidence-based outcomes on assessments, and I think every company should do assessments, for the good of the individual more so than for the good of the company. Why? Because <clears throat> the worst thing to do is for you to front as a candidate because you want that job, mm -hmm. and you find out you're getting into a culture that ends up having a dissonance in your mind and your soul, and then you can't perform. And in our, cult, in our, in our um, country, it's become a little bit of a litigious environment. You can't even use the word test, you have to use the word assessment. You're not allowed to say that it's a go or no-go gauge, but everybody knows it is. Mm -hmm. And it's really important because there's no way for you to get to know a human being in three yes. two-hour sessions. But you can get a deeper understanding of their motivations and where they will excel in the environments they'll excel in mm -hmm. with assessments, and if you share with them, it's critical that you really let us know who you are because we want to make sure our environment is good for you, not that you match our environment. That, there's no subtle difference there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we want to push that across the table and say, yeah. listen, these are, this is our culture and these are our three must-haves. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look like it matches there. Yeah. It's great, you'll, you'll have plenty to say on this, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's, it's a great point, Joe. So we, we have this stage, the stage process, right? So we have our paperwork and that's, that, is, that is there as an intentional hurdle for anyone that's like, I'm not, I'm not doing this paper, I'm not filling these things out, fine. If you, that's not gonna be in keeping with one of our core values of excellence and ethic or work ethic. Yeah, pre-assessment, Exactly, yeah. and we make it like relatively detailed yes. to test that one out. Um, so we've got, we've got that, then we have our first stage interview, which I'll always do. And I, all, it's part of our process, I always start with two statements, which is the purpose of this hour to an hour and a half is twofold. First of all, we need to make sure that you are the right fit for this role in that you have the skill sets, you're gonna enjoy it, or at least you have the ability to learn the skill sets. But more importantly, the second more important outcome is, is this the right place for you for the, hopefully the rest of your career or a big chunk of the next stage in your career? Um, and I, I, I've never done an interview without saying those two statements at the start. It goes back to our process, but it goes back to the piece that you're talking about, which is it's a two-way thing. And it, it's really, really important, from my, in my opinion, to, to include that. Mm -hmm. I've never had candidates call me after interview processes when, when they didn't get the job and say thank you. And I've gotten that with Innovis because it's relational. It's not transactional. It's, so we do a deep dive, right? We do a, what we call a candidate data sheet, and we learn everything about this individual. Maybe they had a couple short stints. Why is that? Well, on paper, you always think of the worst case scenario, right? They, they got laid off because they weren't performing or they got fired and you just jump to conclusions. But when you find out, no, this was a startup that ran out of funding and then they had to leave because they had to take care of an ailing parent, right? You never know if you don't ask. And so we encourage that in our process and we dig deep and then we give you a detailed candidate data sheet and you get to compare that. And then on top of it, you add your pre-assessment mm -hmm. and then a face-to-face -face with the founder. And then you bring them on site so they all are in you know, the community of Innovis and talking to your leadership team. It is an experience. It's not an interview process. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. And you don't sacrifice any of the integrity of the hiring process. So. And, and I, I, I wanna bring that, that, that final point back to mm -hmm. um, you can't do that without good partners. So we, we've, we've come to you guys, you, you're already busy, you already have active processes with many other customers and clients. And I say to you, I, I desperately need you to help me do this in 30 days because it's crunch time for this, this major partnership that we're announcing over here. The only way that we were able to do that to the same standard that if we'd run it as over a 60 or 90 day search 
was because I know that I can rely on your leadership and, and Ryan's hard work and the rest of your team as well to be on it immediately. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to say for, for, for Ryan, I'm so, sorry if this makes you blush, but the, you basically condense 60, 60 to 90 days worth of work down into 30 days. And, and that's, that's, a big, that's a big thing for us when we're choosing our partners and why we're so loyal when we find a partner we're like, you're going to run at the same speed that we're going to run at, mm -hmm. sometimes even quicker. Um, it, it's super powerful stuff. And it, but it, I, I just want to make sure that hits home, which is your process is only as good as the people delivering the process on both sides of the fence. That's the, the, the hiring manager and the search firm. If, if they're misaligned, then you can have the best process in the world and it probably won't work. And there's a metric involved there too. In our organization, um, it's 45 days. Mm. If you can't, from kickoff, search kickoff to offer, if you can't put that in 45 days, you are running the risk of not getting the right hire. Because once a person picks up their head, they're absolutely beside the offer you intend on making, they're getting another offer. It's called the counter offer a majority of the time. Right. In addition, what they're doing is they are looking at another one to two salespeople three times at times, mm -hmm. three other opportunities. Nobody just looks at one. And then finally, once they let their network know that they might be using them for a reference, the network member goes, oh, Sally, I didn't know you were looking. Why don't you come over here? Now all of a sudden, there's another iron in the fire. Yeah. But to your point, if you run the Innovis process and it's crisp, respectful, complete, predictable, first of all, you'll get the offer in their hands before everybody else, and they will compare your process to everybody else's, yeah. and you are going to get the benefit of the doubt nearly all the time if the person is a clear thinker. And if they don't respect that process, they probably won't get to the end of it anyway, and you don't want them anyway. Exactly, and, and that, again, it, it leads all the way back to the word, which is the process, which is, you, you think we've had people that have worked through the process, and it's not until the final hour on the last day that you're like, you've now been differentiated between this person you were actually slightly ahead of or behind. And I think that's the other piece, which again, it comes back to it, not cutting your corners on your process. It has to be the same every single time, because otherwise, how can you objectively measure people? So um, the first round of hiring that we did with you is our commercial hires across the US um, a year ago. Um, as we continue to scale our commercial team over the coming years in the US, we need to run the same process so that we can objectively measure those people against the guys that are already in, especially, as you said, they're crushing their numbers, they're all still here, they're doing really well. And then you look at that and go, okay, well, what, what are the ingredients that you've got? And how does this person now that I'm sitting in front of in this stage of the interview, how do they compare to my notes from last mm -hmm. time? And that's another piece. Um, you're a furious note taker, which is so, so valuable to us. Yeah. Um, and I think that's another important thing that, that shouldn't be unsaid, which is run your process, but make sure you're writing stuff down so you can mm -hmm. refer back to it for the future. Mm -hmm. And then share all of that information with everybody else involved in the hiring process, not just for information's sake, for consistency. Mm -hmm. Did they tell Joe what they told Ryan? Mm -hmm. Is this all lining up? That's all part of a meticulous hiring process. On, on that and the tools as well. So we, we mentioned Belbin earlier. Belt, belt, it's a behavioral, uh, for anyone that's not, not heard of it, it's behavioral rather than um, sort of psychometric test. Mm -hmm. So what behaviors are you more inclined to, to, to like? And therefore, there's certain behaviors that will make you good at a job or more likely good at a job and therefore you'll fit well with the role. So that's one way of looking at Belbin. We use Belbin when I'm sat there listening to people answer questions. I'll always have the Belbin up on the screen. And I use it as a BS detector because it's uncanny when someone says something, they'll say something like, yes, when, I, um, like when I'm in my tool shed at the end of the garden, like when I start a project, uh, I like to make sure that I'm undisturbed, I, I go all the way through the project, everything's tidy and clean at the end of it. Okay, you're a completed finisher, let me just check you, but oh, turns out you're really high on completed finisher. Whereas they may say that, and I look at their bell bit, and they're like zero on completed Well, finish. that's why I'm I said like, where they're fronting, because exactly. they're appearing as the person they think you want them to be. Yes. And clearly, they're not going to perform downrange. Exactly. And it's, a, it, it's uncanny how powerful that is, because then you can start probing and go, hmm, you've just told me something that you think I want to hear. And I've got something that is really hard to hack that's telling me, mm -hmm. you know what, that's probably not true. So let's go off on another, mm -hmm. another tangent and probe that a bit more. And having that courage to do that in the interview process mm -hmm. is so critical because some people won't want that 
sort of, let's call it antagonistic approach. And you're doing both people in the process a disservice. One of the other things, Elliot, that's really important that you're pointing out on the capturing of empirical data, the good note keeping, and keeping to a process is while everything is going extraordinarily well right now for Innovis, there will be a time that you'll hit a struggle on your commercial team. Mm -hmm. So now you can say, what did we miss behaviorally in our process with this individual? Or it seems like serially now, as we're moving through and now we've gone from a sales team of X to 2X to 4X, mm -hmm. that we may have to rethink or re-stratify what our commercial go-to-market looks like. And let's start to unpack that with the broad profiles we're able to get away with as a startup, we might not be able to get away with now as a mid-tier or a very large company. It, that is it's such a powerful point, isn't it? And, and th again, this is where the value of having someone like Ryan as a partner to us in that situation, which is Ryan gets startup, but he, he spent a long time in big strategics. And then he can bring that value and say, okay, that was the profile. You've shared with me that these ones worked out amazingly. They hit home runs. This one was solid. And, and these ones have started to decay a little bit. So let's look at that. And let me bring some of my knowledge from, from the strategics, as your team is now more like a strategic than it was as a startup. So it, it's a really powerful point. And um, Ryan, I don't know if, uh, I mean, you've got so many insights. Every time I sit down with you, I learn something new. But on, on, that, on that sort of, the difference between that startup hire versus that strategic hire. We talked a little bit about it last night, weren't we? Yeah, you really want those people that have been shown to be entrepreneurial in yeah. what they do that really raise their hand and grasp everything quickly at a large strategic. And are, they're no longer challenged. They've hit a ceiling. Maybe the field sales trainers, right? Because they like to train other people, get somebody that's at the bottom, bring them to the top. What I like about your process that we haven't mentioned is you know, you're a physician by trade. That's, that's what you do. So you believe in see one, do one, teach one. And that's part of your hiring process. You, they get a booklet and they have to understand your simulator. And then when they come and meet you live, the CEO, they have to perform. They have to do everything from scratch, put that thing together, use it, and in-service you. So they're showing you that they can do the job before they have the job. And that's advice I give to almost every individual I talk to. You want to make it an easy decision for that hiring manager? Show them you can do the job before you have the job. One of my, my best memories as a hiring manager is I was interviewing a female candidate. She didn't have a ton of experience, but she had big heart, big drive, big ambition. And she came to the final interview process with the list of names of doctors that she had talked to about the products that we were about to launch, that she had studied up on during the process. And she said, whether you hire me or not, here's a list of doctors that want to demo your product. And I was like, right. can, you remember, can you remember her name? So you <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like she'd be a good fit for us over at yeah. Innovis. Le leading teams in, uh, yeah. in large strategics now. But um, no, that's, that's what it's all about, is actually putting the BS detector on and saying, yeah. okay, you've done all the paperwork, you've said all the right things, but can you do the right things? Yes. Do your actions match your words? And, and that's part of your process. We, we put that in there. That we, we, we actually, we took that one from my time at medical school, right? So um, at medical school, pretty much everyone can answer the questions. Yeah. Um, they're either multiple choice or, or they're long form answers. Pretty much everyone's of the intellectual level to be able to do that. It's like outliers, they've all, they've all gone beyond the threshold. The bit that always would sort everyone out is the what we call OSCE, so the, the practical examinations, where you're going, you're having to, you're having to take a history from a patient or break bad news or, or quite literally put a cannula in. And so we took that learning of, that was the bit that we found hardest, that was the highest stakes part of mm -hmm. medical school exams for five years. Let's, in, let's incorporate that into the, into the business, it's these transferable skills. So yeah, we have these different stations um, and you can tell the people that are really engaged in it because they'll come with props. Mm -hmm. that we, we do one for the hiring, uh, for the sales managers, where they have to effectively sell the simulator to us as if they're on an exhibition stand at a, a show. It's a full-on role play during the interview process. <laughs> and, 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 and you'll see some, yeah. some people will come, and, and, and this is the bit where they, they perform really, really well, really, really well. They've answered all the questions nicely, especially the sales guys, because they can all answer questions well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the ones that haven't prepared, it's really obvious. Yeah. And you'll then get these, these other people at the other end of the spectrum where they bring props. I've had people come with um, sale, fake sales sheets for capturing and started taking all that detail down. I've had people turn up where 
they are using words they could only possibly be using if they'd watched every single piece of video content we've ever created and put out there 10 times. And those are all notes that you're sitting there taking going, OK, well, that, that's a positive, that's a positive, that's a positive. And this may sound like, guys, that you're overthinking this a little bit. You're going into a bit of too much detail. That round of hires that we did for the commercial team, and actually the most recent round for our implementation team, there were multiple people that were almost impossible to split objectively at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. And so we have an objective scoring matrix for every single part of, of this process. And we had a number of candidates where they were neck and neck objectively. And then you have to go back through the notes and go, what are the standout bits? Or what's my gut telling me about how that person really feels about this role? So um, yeah, it's an it's important thing for us. It's, um, it's interesting because you know our hiring process all too well. And it's yeah. the same thing. It's nine steps. And there's a cognitive, cognitive intelligence. There's a writing test. There's interviewing the partners. There's eventually interviewing me. Um, there's a purposeful walk with one of the admin from our office to the studio here to see how they treat, interact with somebody who they think might not be a high value player. All that, you know, people will be watching this, so you'll have a cheat meet. But <laughs> the very last, the very last is a presentation in front of the squad that you interviewed with. Mm -hmm. And you were allowed to, it's a 20 minute, you could pick any subject. And the people who come in really well prepared with props mm -hmm. have always been some of my best performers. Won't forget his. He did something that was near and dear to his heart, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and mental health, right? Mm -hmm. Behavioral health, Alzheimer's, right? Mm -hmm. Devin came in, he was a, a beer maker. Like he worked for Sam Adams before he came to us and became the, literally the best recruiter in the country, mm -hmm. right? And he had the hops and he had the barley. And these are the people who thought through all the details. Yes. And then I've had people come in with some crumpled up notes who obviously never got hired and they nailed the rest of their interview and they had industry experience because I know what I'm going to end up with yes. at the end. So it's really interesting that you have that. And I think a majority of organizations should do that as well. Yeah. It's also really fun. Yeah, well, totally fun. I mean, it's a lot of work. So this is the thing. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's really hard work. You have to spend hours and hours and hours thinking this through. But you know what's harder? Having a bad hire. Even more work. Yeah, more expensive as well, right? Um, and it's less, it's less fun. Yes. So, yeah, I think um, if you enjoy the work, but then when, you, when you're in those processes, but also this is, I think, another important thing for anyone that's sitting there listening to this going, this actually is making a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm at the start of my hiring journey. Um, I'm going to start doing this. Um, it's also important to make sure that when you are in that process, it's, it's high stakes, but it is an enjoyable process mm -hmm. because you can make it so stressful that people can't perform. Yeah. Um, and you have to balance that. Um, and we, we have a, a, I mean, we're as fully vertically integrated as you can get. Uh, we've just spent the week over in the UK, uh, the UK factory, um, upscaling some of our, our manufacturing team. Um, so and I, I'll hire them as well. I, I will speak to every single person that comes through the door at Innoverse. And I have to remember before those interviews, Elliot, these guys are 16. Like, this is the first interview they've ever had. They're going to be very mm -hmm. nervous. You have to turn down the, I've just been hiring a new CFO brain. Um, try and make it enjoyable. But you still then have to balance that with, we're still going to hold you to high standards. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so we're coming into the end of October. Mm -hmm. um, share with us what we should be watching for for Innovis over the near future. Yeah, well, it's, as I say, a busy year, um, some really exciting stuff coming down the pipeline, um, re really around expansion. Um, we've more than, over the last year, we've more than doubled our headcount as a business. Uh, and at the moment, that's not slowing down, as we can tell from this discussion. Um, there's some exciting news over this side of the pond in the US. Um, and watch that space around um, the, the expansion of our, our footprint here um, in, in the US. And that's going to be something that's very exciting for us because we started our journey in the US probably three years ago. I came and, I came and said to Joe, I'm turning up in your offices in October 2021. And then within a year, we were hiring the team. Now we've secured a major partnership and there's, there's some more stuff coming in terms of our US expansion. But it goes, it goes back to my piece at the start, which is as best as we possibly can, when we say we're going to do something at Innovus, it, we generally make it happen. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Exciting news this side of the pond. There's actually some exciting news on the, uh, in the um, UK as well over that side of the pond. Again, all around expanding our footprint and our reach. Um, 
and hopefully we'll, we'll see that in the press in the next couple of weeks. Excellent. Any shows coming up soon that people can catch you at? Yeah, thanks, Joe. So we're um, we're going to be at the at the AAGL uh, event um, literally in a, a sort of week and a half's time, uh, and and that's it's 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 out there in the in the public domain. That's our partnership that we've just announced between ourselves, uh, AAGL and Hologic on their uh, on AAGL's EMIX program. So um, that's going to be incredibly exciting. It's almost one of those moments of how it started, how it's going, um, because. <laughs> Myself and my co-founder Jordan, we turned up to AAGL, I think, for the first time four years ago with a small little booth. Um, we've now got the, the sort of the biggest booth we've ever had, and we're unveiling this partnership, which is great for us as a business. But the, the thing that we're most proud of, it's incredibly, incredibly impactful for the patients. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, AAGL in Nashville in a couple of weeks, um, and then we'll be at IMSH, the, the simulation show in January, and looking forward to that as well. Fantastic. Well, as always, my friend. Um, you and I have an appointment in a couple hours for some great Wagyu. Certainly do. And <laughs> we save your dietary uh, sort of sins for this kind of life. <laughs> and Ryan, is always, great job in putting together probably one of the funnest, best teams in MedTech, I think. Yeah, for sure. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Thanks, Jake. Thanks. I'm Joe Mullings from 160 Studios. Be well. <laughs>